art. All right, and then Safari, this opens up into, there's Google right now, and let me just go to some place that you'll recognize. Let me just enter in CNN, let's go to CNN.com, and you'll see that. So it's gonna just uh, pull it off the internet right now. Come on. It doesn't matter which way that you're oriented here, whether you're landscape or portrait, doesn't matter, just automatically adjust to it. Something big must be happening at CNN right now. This is quite slow. Okay, so there it is. And just like you use it on your normal desktop or laptop, it looks exactly the same. Uh, if you want something a little bit closer, you can just double tap on it and it zooms in, just to make it a little, little more readable. Again, if you rotate it, it just rotates automatically. Let me just go zoom in and zoom out. There it is. There's the CNN website just like normal. And so that's the whole internet that's opened up. Okay, a um, couple of these other things are just I use, uh, apps that I use, but you don't need to see. I've got what's playing in my theaters, the ABC Player, Netflix, Redbox, Yelp. Uh, but now I'm gonna open up Camera Bag. When we first started playing with the iPad, we thought, well, this is just really a device for consuming the internet and not necessarily creating anything. But I'm gonna go in here to my student photos and I'm gonna get a photo of say, a flash drive that a student took. Let it load up there. Okay, I'm going to add a border to it. Nice, uh, like an instant. I'm going to do it like a Polaroid. And then I'm going to add a filter to it to make it also match that shot for an instant shot. And there it is. It looks like a Polaroid shot. I can change it to black and white if I want to. Let's go in here, silver. There it is in black and white. And then I can just hit save and now I've done creating on the iPad. And this goes for typing and text and documents and presentations. You can do that all on an iPad. So it really is a workhorse of a device. And to be honest with you, in the, the five or six weeks I've been testing this, I've not used my laptop very much at all because I can do so much on the iPad. All right, so that shows that. I'm gonna just go through, go to meeting is on here. Um, sound paper, I'll demonstrate some of that a little bit later on. Let me just go to the next page of apps. Okay, um, National Geographic Atlas. So here, here's where maps is just really, uh, the maps of the area, this is really like an atlas. So, it, and we recognize the look of it here. So we can zoom into, let's say we're studying about uh, the Middle East. Well, we can zoom into the Middle East here. And we can also pull up information about them from our atlas. So let's go get some information on Bolivia, and then it'll, it'll take us to Bolivia and give us all the information, the flag, all the stuff we've been used to seeing in an atlas. We've got it right here in our iPad. So are you starting to see all the things that should be stacked up behind this? Atlas and books and all those things that uh, poor little students have been hauling around in their backpacks forever are now all just in one device. I want to show you an uh, application that's going to be really applicable in high school, college, and beyond, and possibly even for our middle school students, and it's called Dragon Dictation, and it's a free app. Watch this. I click on this. Now my microphone is just right here on this end next to my uh, headphone jack. There's a little microphone, a little pinhole mic right there. So this is not even using a great mic. And watch, just tap to dictate. This iPad is absolutely amazing. In fact, comma, the people watching this video right now won't believe how easy it is for me to type things into my iPad by just using my voice. Period. New paragraph. They are going to want one for sure now in their classrooms, period. Just tap on that to stop that. Oh, here I'm going to bring it in close. Let's see if it got it. Well, I called it an iPad. This iPad is absolutely amazing. In fact, comma, the people watching this video right now won't believe how easy it is for me to type things on my iPad uh, by using just my voice. Look at how it did it. With the exception of just two words there, it got iPad instead of iPad. It did it. And so it, I'd say 90 to 99 percent accurate most of the time. Now you do have to kind of speak like a robot and you have to add your punctuations in there, but it is going to be fantastic. It's just, this is beta. This is the first version of this software uh, on a first version iPad. So this is only going to get better. All right, so that's that. Let's go into, uh, now they tell me this is a calculator that's comparable to a TI-83 because you can plot on it. So you can go X equals 9Y times five, and then hit plot, and it'll plot in 3D and 2D, but I don't quite know enough about plotting calculators to really blow you away with this one, but you get the idea. There's lots on here for students to do. I think this one was $1.99.
So now we could stack in a $150 calculator behind this as well. Uh, here is This Day by World Book. We can see that South Carolina became the 8th U.S. state. I can click on that. A little story on that with a photo. Another great thing for current affairs and for uh, kids to understand what's going on in, their, in the world around them. All right. Here's math. Now, I teach in an elementary school, so this is the lower level math here. But let me go back to the beginning. We could do bubble math. Now, watch how nice this one is. Okay, touch two bubbles to get the answer. So something plus something equals 13. Okay, so, okay, 11 and 2. There we go. Something plus something is 17. So you got to really kind of look what's available here and go, see, I can't go 9 and 8 because there is no 8, so I'd have to go like 12 and 5. There we go. And then also the same thing you saw here for flashcards. And you nice thing is you can figure things out here. You can you can like start counting, you know, tally marks if you wanted to. Okay, you get up to 12 and then you can add your 3 onto there, all those things to get your answer of 15. Or you could carry numbers, you know, you could be carrying numbers up there and you can use all this if you do multiplication, you can put them into groups because you have the ability to sketch right here inside this application. All right, let's move on. These look like most of my games. Oh, now here are books. Look at this book here for middle school students. Maybe even middle schoolers who are learning uh, English as their second language. And I can go in here and I can have this book read to me if I want. Tuesday, March 2nd. Mr. Grumble was our English sub again. So I guess you're still sick, Miss Westing. Drink plenty of fluids. It's a really good book that the students, that this, this one here. Okay, now let's go into something very familiar here, The Cat in the Hat for the younger students. The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. And we'll do autoplay. Start over. Now watch how this one animates and puts sound effects. You hear the falling rain? The sun did not shine. It was too wet to play. So we sat in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. And there's I the page. sat there with Sally. We sat there, we two. And I said, how I wish... Oh, so that's the cat in the hat. I think I have one more page of app 